This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Welcome to the world of financial instruments. Again, you would have met these in financial reporting, but my assumption is that people have forgotten a lot of this, so I will go back to basics. When you think about the soft P, there's an accounting standard for everything, isn't there? So we've got PPE and investment property, we've got intangible assets and so on. But a great big group of assets and liabilities comes under the heading of financial instruments. Now, you don't really need to distinguish the standards. IES 32 is about classification, what goes where. IFRS 7 is about disclosure requirements, which are not really tested in any depth. IFRS 9 is about measurement, which is where sometimes the standard can be a little bit messy. But one thing that you will have understood in your earlier studies is that a financial instrument is all about a contract between two companies. So I'm just going to write the word contract there. There are all sorts of possibilities. One of the companies will have a financial asset and the other company will have a financial liability or equity. So trying to make that distinction between the two, a financial asset could of course be that you own shares in another company. If you own shares in another company, in that case, that company has issued the shares and issued equity. So we're all familiar with that concept. It could be that you have lent some money to another company. It sounds very strange, doesn't it, to say purchased debt, but it just means lent. So if you've lent some money to another company, in that case, the company has debt on its books. And just as it issues shares, when it borrows money, it issues debt. So issue just means borrow in this context. In that case, the borrowing company would have a liability in their books. That's a long-term arrangement. It could be a much shorter-term arrangement, of course. And that is, if you've simply gone into a trade sale... I've sold some croissant to someone or some bread. In that case, I've got a receivable. The other party, again, has got a liability. There's no difference between the last two, is there? The rules are just the same. But if you've got a regular payable, presumably the accounting is a bit simpler than something that looks like a very complex loan. So everything on the left is about a financial asset. Everything on the right is about a liability or equity. It's worth saying straight away that things like preference shares are nowadays usually seen as liabilities because you have to pay the money. If you don't pay the money, they'll get the company wound up. So preference shares are liabilities or it's, it's regular or ordinary shares are the ones that are seen as equity. Those of you that like double entry, everything on the left is a debit and everything on the right is a credit. The definitions of financial asset, financial liability, equity are very complex in practice. However, what we've tried to do is to distill here and say these are the words that you will probably use in the exam. So a financial asset is either an equity investment in another company. That's this first scenario up here, isn't it? When you buy shares or it's a contractual right to receive cash. And that would be the second situations, wouldn't it? If you lend them money or if you sell them goods um, on credit. Financial liability in its simplest form is a contractual obligation to deliver cash. 
Look back in your notes at the framework chapter. Make sure you can distinguish the definition of liability and financial liability. Financial liability is much simpler. It just says contractual obligation to deliver cash. Equity, which we've seen elsewhere in the syllabus, is just what is left, a residual interest. So same definition as you saw in the framework. It's what's left, isn't it? After you deduct the liabilities from the assets, it's what's left over. Now, amongst the financial instruments that we look at, we have to look at derivatives. And this sometimes gets people into a panic. And they say, well, what are derivatives? Options and futures. And they perhaps say that they didn't really understand them in financial management. I'm sure you did. Will they get a complex question? No. Things like agriculture are in the syllabus. It's something you learned in FR. So you could be asked to ask how a um, sheep is valued, at fair value, of course. And you don't really need to know much about sheep, exactly where they live on the hill. In the same way, you don't need to know very much about derivatives. You don't need to know about their characteristics, except that you must learn this definition. If there's any reference in the exam to a derivative, there's bound to be a mark going for writing out this very basic definition. Notice it doesn't say that it's an option or future. We'll talk about that distinction later. It simply says it's something whose value is linked to something underlying. An option to sell shares. A future on sausages. A swap on interest rates, but in some way, the value of the derivative is linked to something else. Interest rates, share price, the price of potatoes. Secondly, when you go into derivative trading, you don't need to spend much money. So it requires very little investment at the start. Again, we'll talk about that later. And finally, it's settled at a future date. And it's settled for cash. I can't remember, there was a, a film which is probably knocking around called Trading Places with Eddie Murphy. I can't remember what he was trading, pork bellies or something. But at the end of the contract, no one was transferring any pork bellies or anything like that. The contract was simply a bet. Just as you might have a bet with your friend on the results of the football, this is just a big bet on the price of flour. And the, again, the derivatives that are within the scope of the standard are only those settled for cash. Now, you may see these yellow words in a scenario. So, derivatives, particularly commodity derivatives like oil or potatoes, settled by delivery of the oil or potatoes, they're nothing to do with IFRS 9 whatsoever. So the rules here in IFRS 9 do not apply to those things. If I've agreed to buy some oil next year and I'm physically receiving the oil, that is not a derivative within the meaning of this standard. It's simply a contract to buy oil next year. You may remember this word executory from when you learned law and you spoke about consideration and you said that consideration could be executed or executory. Executory means you're giving that you're giving someone a physical asset in the future. So if you see the word this is an executory contract, don't you know go into orbit like a space shuttle, just go, yeah, that's not in the scope of this standard. Thank you very much. We're just concerned with financial assets, which are settled again in money terms, a bet on the price of something. The other point I just probably want to stress by way of introduction is that when we think about the classification of assets and liabilities, we are very, very concerned about the impact of these things 
on ratios because if you had some kind of strange instrument, so I'm just going to use the word instrument, whatever it is, I'll call it a, a splop-lop. I've just made that word up, a splop-lop. So if you've decided that it has the characteristics of liability, that means in terms of your ratios, that your gearing will go up and you'll have interest to pay. So your interest cover will go down. We talk about interps much later in the syllabus. If you've decided that it's equity, it's the other way around, isn't it? So your gearing will not be high. And again, you won't have interest blocking up your profit and loss account. So your interest cover, again, will go up. So if you are a wicked finance director, especially in an ethics question, you'll do everything in your power to pretend that something that is a liability, you'll pretend that it's equity. And you'll do that by giving it a name like Rubble or something like that. The classic example, though, is the preference share. In almost all cases these days, preference shares are liabilities. There we go. There's an introduction to financial instruments.